Robots like this one here are dangerous, which is why they live in cages like manatees at the zoo. But engineers have come up with clever ways of harnessing the incredible power these feral machines possess, using it to create rather than destroy. Indeed, these beasts play a major role in modern manufacturing, but don't be afraid. There are still careers for you, human viewer, jobs in the factory of the future. Well, jobs as long as you don't anger the robots. I'm Craig Cole, and I ask the deep, thought-provoking questions so you don't have to. Why are you trying to hide lead-acid battery technology? It's the future. Why do so many people think soup is a bad road trip food? Tesla's had autopilot for years. When are your flying cars coming out? To learn the ins and outs of modern manufacturing, I sat down with Todd DeVille, Vice President of Advanced Manufacturing Innovation at Magna, for a candid conversation about careers of the future in the factory of tomorrow. Who are you and what do you do at Magna? I'm Todd DeVille. Uh, I lead our advanced manufacturing innovation team in uh, corporate R&D. Is Magna a manufacturer? And if so, what does the company build? Definitely a manufacturer, but not just a manufacturer, right? But at our heart, we, we build things. That's the, the core of the company. And you know, some of the things we, you see around here uh, behind you, right? Is manufacturing important and can you build things without it? Yes and no. Uh, manufacturing, I mean, it's, it's, it's critical, right? Uh, at its root, um, you know, we, we have to make physical things and that's, that's manufacturing. Does Magna also make profits? And if so, are those stamped? Are they extruded? Profits, you say? Well, profits kind of tend to be, I, I learned a byproduct of making other things that people want. Yeah, so why not just manufacture the money? Wouldn't that be a lot simpler? Well, we're in the United States, and I, I think the government kind of has a monopoly on that. I mean, it's a good business model. I'm suggesting it for you guys Fantastic to expand, expand potentially. Uh, well, um, take that under advisement. Please do, and do credit me if you decide to go that route. Um, so why would anybody want to work in manufacturing? Isn't it dirty and dangerous? And if I wanted to deal with any of that, I could just be an elementary school teacher or something, right? Well, not to knock elementary school teachers, because you know we need those too. But manufacturing, it, it's not dirty and dangerous. Generally, a clean, neat, safe environment is, going back to your earlier point, a profitable, efficient factory. Because I'm just imagining a Victorian era fabric mill or something. That's, that's not the case. We're, we're a couple industrial revolutions past that. Yeah. But you also have things like you know robotics, right? Which basically help people do their jobs. Um, and, and typically taking on sort of the heavy, highly repetitive, dirtier tasks uh, and trying to automate those. And so people don't have to do them. And, and basically you can allow people to, to work at what they do best, right? H higher value added, higher quality uh, work and effort, and then use the, the robots and the technology to support it. You mentioned using robotic technology to sort of do the dirtier tasks. What are the dirtier tasks? Is that shoveling coal and cleaning the smokestacks or what? No, so if you think about sort of moving um, large or heavy components uh, uh, or, or say having to, to do machine tending, so you have a, a process, whether it's a stamping process, a molding process, welding, et cetera, and you need to move components or assemblies around, uh, they may be hot, they may be dirty, they may be a, you know, an unsafe environment. You can use robots in those environments to get people out. I'll be honest, I, I have seen some of these robots and I'm just, I'm not very impressed. I'll be honest. I expected a lovable sidekick, someone with humorous anecdotes. You, you want a, a, a cuddly sidekick is what you're looking yes, for? Yes, yes. Yeah. Somebody, a gold suit, perhaps. I don't know. What would you have them do? That's a good question. Just just hang around and, and humor me, I think. Yeah, ha humor me. And, laugh, and help laugh carry my jokes. bags. Yeah. Laugh at my jokes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They're usually pretty good. Um, what emotions do the robots feel? Well, I think maybe not emotions directly. If you think, what, what is an emotion to a robot? It's a sense, right? It's a sense. So touch or sight, um, they probably feel this is heavy. 
<laughs> this is in the wrong spot. I got to fix this. I need some maintenance. Are you a robot? Not that I'm aware of, although you're not the first person to ask. Perfect. Then can you help me find the traffic lights in this picture? Because I've been trying to get in my bank account for more than two weeks, and this keeps tripping me up. Uh, yeah, no, my eyes aren't that good, sorry. So maybe you are a robot after I, all. I failed the test. Well, so did I, to be fair. Yeah, okay. I still can't get to my checking account. Any idea how long until we have, like, true artificial intelligence? When will robots become sentient? So... <laughs> Sentience a tough question, right? Uh, I, I, that is kind of out there and, and almost a question for the philosophers, I'd say, sort of when, when you have sort of true sentience or self-awareness. But what's really important is artificial intelligence that's useful, we have today. Can it do everything people do? No, not yet. To be honest, I don't think that can be judged until sort of we're at some point in the future and historians can look back. But the important point is for today, we can use it now. We can start applying it and it just gets better all the time. Talk to me about AI or data analytics, other, other facets of manufacturing that maybe don't get covered. Computers are very good at uh, looking at multivariable things that, you know, as a person, you can handle a certain level of complexity. At some point, it becomes too much. And, and that's really where, where the, uh, the AI software and these systems come in, and they can sort of help us make better decisions, better modeling of flows through the plant. If you think about uh, robotics and automation, uh, vision inspection cameras, we're moving from much more, um, say, discrete programming. Most people don't directly write a program on their phone or the computer. Most people, there's tools you use, whether it's sort of video or audio or sort of graphical interfaces to help program and guide and train. Uh, I think we'll see far more of that coming into the factory. So modern manufacturing is not just standing on the assembly line, putting a, the same component in a vehicle or working at a CNC machine. There's a lot more to it than that. There's, there's an awful lot more to it than that, right? And I think the, it, what you see, the manufacturing, the piece is sort of the tip of the iceberg. And then you have the whole iceberg underneath that's you know, all, all of this back end uh, uh, knowledge and effort, right? You mentioned that a lot of the programming is done sort of graphically. You're not sitting there typing out code anymore. So if people, say during COVID, went to a, say a coding boot camp to learn some of the basics of, of writing computer code, is that something you guys would be looking for at Magna? Yes, I mean, certainly, right? It depends on the specific role you're looking for. But uh, I think um, like a, a general coding skills are useful in a whole lot of areas. So um, yeah, certainly. Why are punch cards though, why are they still the best way to program? Well, um, if you grew up with punch cards, that may be the case. Uh, they were a little bit before my time. Okay, um, so you, you're not familiar then. All right, yeah, well, we'll have to find a manufacturing guy to talk to. You may have to go to a museum. Gotcha. What should people study in school if they want to work in manufacturing? You don't have to have a master's degree in computer science, right? No, no, I mean, most most manufacturing roles are, you know, are. Are you passionate about about the particular sort of area you want to work in? That's that's sort of really important, right? The level of technology awareness and integration of of really everybody is so high now. I look at my kids and their friends, and it's just natural. And it, I think everybody has that already. Some people more than others, and I think that's in the future a real sort of need in uh, of almost every role. So, if somebody had their heart set on working in, say, Silicon Valley. Is the mobility industry a good place for them as an alternative to that? Definitely. If you're looking for technology challenges, we got that. No shortage there. We have, I'll say, we're working on some of the more difficult problems, I think, that, that exist out there. Where I think it gets really exciting is we get to apply those to things we make and build. And you end up seeing on the road every day or on the street or sort of get used by millions and millions of people uh, to sort of make their, make their lives better, right? I think that's, at least for me, that's a highly attractive incentive to sort of work in the industry. Work with technology and use it uh, to, to make and build things people use every day. Can you make a good living working in manufacturing? Yes. <laughs> yes, you can make a very good living. I mean, ultimately, right, you're, you're providing uh, people something they need and want for, sort of the, uh, for, for society and, and you have customers willing to pay. And in that scenario, yeah, you can always make a good living. If you had to do it all over again, would you still work at Magna? Or are the robots keeping you from leaving? Are they blackmailing you? And you don't have to say yes, or you can blink twice for yes, three times for no. Unequivocally, 
yes, <laughs> I would. I would work for Magda again, no question. And uh, yeah, no, the robots are not providing any undue influence. Manufacturing. It is no longer a dirty and dangerous profession like, I don't know, marriage counseling. The factory of the future is clean, safe, and highly automated with all kinds of different robots that aren't scheming to take you out. Well, at least not yet. And of course, as we learned in this video today, modern manufacturing is a fantastic career option for all kinds of different people. Hey, if you're looking for a job in the mobility business, there may be a career for you in the field of sustainability. Click right over here to learn more.